The good news is Boulder can solve the housing crisis and implement our beloved Boulder Valley Comprehensive Plan values to be a diverse, welcoming, deeply sustainable community. In fact, we already proved how to do it with open space. Take the land out of the speculative market. This is a way for everyone to benefit from a new community model that really is a little bit like going back to the past when we had more mixed income communities and mixed age communities. Hello, Boulder and the wider world. This is the Sharing Boulder podcast. My name is Philip Ogren, and for episode 19, I sat down with my co-host David Adamson in the recording studio to talk about high community benefit housing pilots. As the new city council prepares for its annual retreat in January, where they will prioritize their agenda for the coming year, David and I want to promote gentle infill in established neighborhoods as a solution that addresses so many of the values that have been identified by the Boulder Valley Comprehensive Plan. We hope that you will listen, learn, get motivated, and share this with your favorite city council person. David has a long history of heroically planning for and promoting inclusive and affordable housing in his North Boulder neighborhood. But he is swimming against a tide that is the current housing market, which incentivizes scraping smaller homes and replacing them with mansions or building luxury condos where affordable housing once stood, and city codes that regulate against building the kind of beautiful, compact, inclusive, and affordable housing that he is trying to develop. We talk about a specific housing pilot that he is working on and how his neighborhood and all of Boulder could benefit from this kind of innovative and inclusive housing. We hope you enjoy this conversation about the future of housing in Boulder. So David, we are here to talk about a housing pilot. And Great. what I would love to do is for you to start off by by um, explaining a housing pilot, like an a- actual example of what we're talking about. And then let's let's generalize and talk about all the benefits that, that accrue. So can you talk about um, 750 North Street for, for a minute? I definitely can. And um, uh, we, we purchased 750 North Street, which is an old duplex uh, built in 1957. It's like a museum from the 50s. Um, nothing's been changed in it. It's been rental housing for a long, long time. With the idea of making it for sale housing, which we're really missing. And uh, so the idea is to take this old, this old duplex and turn it into um, something that retains the neighborhood character of this area, which is mostly people turning anything into like a McMansion, you know, a 4,000, 5,000 square foot house. So, you know, make it look mostly like that, but have it be affordable housing to a mix of incomes. Mm -hmm. You know, eight little condos in that um, that form and um, you know we showed how you could put from 300 to 900 square feet I mean these are modest uh, little condos each with their own kitchen or the original idea and that those would be sold between 60 percent and 150 percent of area median income that's like forty thousand dollars for a single person to $150,000 for a single person. So, you know, the middle, um, if that's who it's for, it'd be sold to them. And um, those folks would own some cars together and that would be the pr- in the price of it. Nice. So we're showing the rest of Boulder, hey, we can have more people, especially workers now who are now commuting in now creating pollution now creating carbon emissions now creating congestion in our streets oh they could live right here they could share some cars and maybe some of the neighbors would also be able to share those cars yeah if you sponsored a a a colorado car share car then they could actually run it 
Perhaps, I don't know. Well, and, and well, our idea was that we'd also be members of that car share. So we're gotcha. trying to show yeah. those people buying. Because there's one just half a block away. There's just here. one at the yeah. Ostara Co-op. But we're also, everyone wants great mobility. You know, we're trying to make this a big improvement for everybody, you mm-hmm. know. So, but that's the basic idea. Transform what will become McMansions. I mean, yeah, that, unless we do, uh, you know, some of this mixed you know, missing middle housing. Yeah. Um, it's not for everyone, you know, but... No, I, I think that's a great point because um, the logical thing to, for you to do as an investor that, that has worked on this property is to go ahead and McMansionize it and and, <laughs> and go, you know, like scrape, scrape it or rebuild it and sell it to the highest bidder, right? And, you know, like squeeze out as much profit as you can. And... Um, that's that's doesn't address any of the things that we care about in terms of community or climate crisis or uh, uh, racial di- justice or yeah diversity um, and uh, so I I love this concept. I want to bring up the um, important issue of money yeah. because the way we're doing this has a a great we think will be a high market return for investors, which can include or could be only neighbors. <laughs> You know, sure. could be doing this or the people who want to live there, they could develop it. And the point is, you are going to buy these dumpy old places that need to be improved. And what are, we're suggesting, make it really easy for people to just check off a few boxes. This is they want to do the thing we need, make it easy for them. But you're going to donate the land underneath the dumpy building to a community land trust. And that's another source of return the charitable donating a million dollars, you know, say you're, you're, you're five people, buy the thing for a million dollars, you put $200,000 down, the five of you, you know, each put $40,000 into it, or, you know, you can do you know, all different, which is what we did, all different levels, you get to make a big gift and it saves you a lot on the taxes, whether you're a single investor or whether you're the, all those people. So that's the point that we don't have to sacrifice making money to, to, to make our communities even better. Well, I love the notion of having market forces have the wind in our sails in terms, I mean, because really like market forces want to build a lot more um, housing. And so why, why should we set up a market where it's rigged towards only luxury condos and only scrapes for McMansionizing? Um, why don't we have a market that makes it uh, attractive for people to invest in the kind of housing we need? I think that's... And arguably, e- even more profitable for certain components of the, you know, the fire, the finance, insurance, real estate, you know, industry, which is arguably like our most vital <laughs> industry in the U.S., um, you know, architects get to design a lot of different things, and 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 realtors get to sell more more units. And so we got some local investors to do this thing. But I want to talk about the elephant in the room here, which is well, what about what 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 about pe- the neighbors? What do they think about this? So they must they must be up in arms. They must hate it. <laughs> well, and you know, obviously, we're trying to address the car thing. Number one, that's yeah. people's like hot button concern. Well, I'm never going to be able to park. Yeah. And, you know, so we're showing you're going to more people and not have that problem. So right now we're talking about a 10 unit co-housing, cooperative housing unit. Do you want to just explain that real quick? Because so it's a it's a similar building it's a similar scale building. Yeah. And we wanted to do the condo one because we we think that's easier to sell, you yeah, know, like more replicable. More people can do that kind of thing. Um, but uh, we can build by right you know, 10 co-ops in the city and no one has built a new co-op and no one has built a for sale co-op. Right. So we, we're interested, Goose Creek Community Land Trust wants to open up this other front on affordable housing, you know, yeah. more for sale, more mixed. Um, so so there's, there's 10 shares. In the there's 11 city. shares. It has an ADU in the back. Uh, so there's, that's one share. Yep. And then there's 10 bedrooms in the thing. And that's, that's yeah. 10. So it's a total of 11. And so the reason I backtracked on this is because not, now you have 11 cars minimum. 
if, if, if and, and the neighbors' perspectives are like eleven, right? You know, right? So we don't need eleven more cars out there. Well, not to get too much into the weeds on that, but it, you know, it's a very walkable neighborhood here. Yeah, the people are paying for that small fleet of electric cars that's in their price they have to buy it yeah. and the people who are going to buy it are the people who want to live like that totally and so i live across the street and i'm a i've got my own little you know ruler that i'm you know but yeah it's just not a problem it's really not a problem it's so fun what we're trying to show people is when you we're not asking anyone else to give up their car. We're not going to take their gun from their dead cold hand. You know, we're not going to. It's not going to. It's going to make it easier for you. Arguably, less congestion for you, and maybe it's very cheap to use that kind of mobility. You just it's, save money it is. doing that, and it's more fun, as you and I. Well, know. and the notion of having um, a car share out your front door. Um, or in your garage. That, that sounds amazing to me because for, as someone who had this extended uh, experiment where we went without a car raising a family for uh, a couple of years. Um, uh, our nearest car share was two miles away at the at the bottom of uh, Table Mesa and, and Broadway. We had to take the bus down to get it or ride our bikes down to get it. So the notion that you step outside and drive a nice car that's maintained by somebody else as car insurance and... All that's that. Right. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's, that's, you know, again, these changes are not for everyone. Yeah. These changes are things to see other people adopt. Maybe you can try some part of it, you know, maybe. You, but the thing we want to talk about is how did people around here th think about this? And yeah. we've had quite a bit of time yeah. as we've wrestled. I love, I, love this, to, I love this pie chart. To too. try to... Um, try to get this through. And as you know, I'm a, I'm a painfully... Um, persistent extrovert well, I'm interested to know how everyone thinks about everything so we you know they're in this particular three block area where we're trying to create this co-housing project there are 32 lots in this three block section between sixth and ninth mm -hmm. and um there's 41 people who own those lots and there are uh you know 14 of them are owner occupied and 18 are investor and you know, absentee landowner occupied. So we found talking to people that there's most people are oh, that sounds that sounds good. You know, the, you know, the, the majority of, of them, <laughs> narrow majority or, you know, they're for it or they're unopposed. There's, you know, 16 people, they're like absentee landlords. You, you can't reach them. You, you know, you try if they were really concerned about it. You know, they would be, you know, showing up. I mean, I've been, yeah. they, they've received information about it. And then the folks on either side of it, either model, the condo or the cop, they were not in favor of it. They didn't, yeah. they'd like to see, you know, somewhat fewer people. And the whole point of our model was this is the number of units you need to have if you wanted them to all be affordable across a range yeah so you don't need to like first get all the financing of some grant or some program in in place before you can start that that's a great point that's a great point and and and, and that's what's important for people to know about this this is not this traditional affordable housing um uh, financed through low income tax credits which is basically a way to provide incentive to wealthy people to invest in below cost housing you know that's that's what it is and it's a, a great thing but you know we're trying to create another um, model of housing which is let's have all housing actually all the whole housing industry meet our needs and so more broadly in the town we're interested in seeing some luxury housing you know not against luxury housing I, I'm against all, you know, 100% luxury housing for a, a building. Do we need to provide more housing for wealthy people? You know, it just doesn't. So, but the model of having some wealthy people and they subsidize the, the below cost units because we want people to make money building this housing. That's how yeah. it has to work. Yeah. And then the middle income housing can be produced for a profit. So it's a way to maybe have a low or no, no subsidy. That's a big point. 
Yeah, but I so I here we're just trying to show that. So people, there's you know, just two people who are vociferously. I mean, they're not even vociferous. I mean, yeah. they, 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 who wants a construction project next to them? That's part of it. Thanks. This is a key point. I want to uh, thank the people in Samuel Hughes at Oxford University. Their model in Britain, they call it strong suburbs, but they suggest letting a whole street work you know they need housing they say okay you guys how would you like to do it within these guidelines we need this much housing how do you want to do it and they empower the renters yeah and the, the, and the, the actual residents the people the who street, live there yeah. all the residents on the street whether you own it there or whether you rent you work together with the idea that the renters will be incentivized by the absentee landlords to increase the density so i like that idea philip i really want to emphasize this because Everyone can benefit. Everyone doesn't have to densify, you know. You know, maybe later they want to develop a unit and they keep living on their street. They've lived there for 30 years and now they want to downsize. They can have their nice unit. They can be set up for retirement. They have a, a cool house. They don't have to move. Yep. They can stay there. So I think this is a, you know, people have been worried about like this pie chart is about, well, you're going to build this thing and you're going to burden the rest of us. But, you know, we want to give everyone the opportunity. And that's what the pilot is about, is a broad-based uh, innovate for impact. Well, I think it's important to, to point out for this particular property that it's a huge parcel of land, right? It's like it goes all the way back to an alley. And when you walk through it, the notion of putting this 10-room this housing structure, it... I think it'll be gorgeous and beautiful and people will see it from the street. And, right. And it's not out of scale or yeah. out of, um, right. You know, it's 6,000 square feet. I mean, the city, when you really get down to it, um, you know, the right of way is really big. I mean, the street and the right of way, people don't really understand that the city owns a, and controls a huge amount of land, like all in front of all of our houses. Point is, you can have housing in our current scale for now with the land prices that they are now. So we have a few things to cover still. So um, what what do you need from city council? We spend a lot of time with city attorneys and the city uses the idea of a special ordinance to accomplish different things at different times. They're the legislative body of our government and they can they can let it be so. You know, we, we meet the land use um, description for this RMX1 zone. And back in 95, they took away a bunch of the, the density for this area. Um, and that's why we have these triplexes and fourplexes, duplexes and everything in subdivided lots. But then they took that away. So we're basically asking to bring that back in a little bit different way, which would just allow flexibility in the number of units if you make most of it affordable permanently and share cars. And you know, you know you're building really nice new green uh, solar powered buildings. So we're asking city council to simply change the number of kitchens that would be allowed on that property keeping everything else the same. So the scale, so even the for this, setbacks. For this project, you'd like that's right. that project. Everything else, we, that's what we want to do. Is yeah. we, everything else is the same, but allow that flexibility with kitchens. And then you can have all different sizes of, it's not just for us doing this one six block area. Maybe that's the pilot we ask for. I wanted a, a bigger area and have more people participate, but yeah. at least that six block area or a little bit bigger around here that makes sense cool. so the city council would have an ordinance which we've drafted that would specifically allow this deviation you know it's not just one building it's not spot zoning okay yeah it is for an area you know we have some other properties here that we would i mean yeah. we have the design for that we could do it somewhere else yeah we, we'd probably Obviously. keep building yeah. the co-op yeah but um and we're yeah. about giving other people. It doesn't have to yeah. all be done yeah, through Goose Creek Community Land yeah, Trust or whatever. We we are here to take the gift of the land, though, and I then see. to st steward the community. I mean, I guess we want to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, in this area, you know, it's just making it easy for people who want to do this. Who are they going to give the land to? But you could give it to the city as well. 
Yeah. I mean, if yeah. they wanted it, I don't don't want to speak for them. Awesome. So, uh, well, the th- one thing I wanted to circle back on is to highlight why this particular housing solution is better than a lot of other housing solutions being proposed. And for me, what I what I love about, you know, when I think about affordable housing, like we need to build lots of affordable housing. So one thing we could do is build large uh, apartment buildings near a transit corridor, which that seems like it has a role. But um, uh, when I think about where I would like to live, I would like to live in a neighborhood like this, where right. it's like it's beautiful. There's an established community. Like I don't I don't think of um, large apartment buildings as necessarily being the most pro-social, community-oriented places. It's, it doesn't mean they can't be if, with, right. if carefully designed. But there's a kind of a natural, organic, uh, built-in, let's, let's grow the community when you have this sort of infill that you're talking about. I think that is the key thing for, for this in terms of climate resilience, people knowing each other. That's like the number one... What, the tor- recent tornado, tornadoes in Kentucky, so many of the the survivors of that talked about how beautiful it was that everyone came to has been coming together to help each other. When you you're just creating the surf, greater surface area, when you get these walkable, bikeable communities, and and people get to know each other, you have to do some things I think to help accelerate, encourage it. But it just makes it so much more fun. And then there's the issue about being fair to our working people and, you know, and making our businesses better and bringing in more racial diversity and, and economic diversity. And also something we haven't talked about a lot, but, um, you know, we, we need to figure out how this is part of reparations for indigenous tribes, how this land reform in Boulder and changing can benefit tribes. You know, I know specifically that the Native American Rights Fund on Broadway, you know, they're considering moving out of Boulder because their staff just couldn't live here. So, but I think the key is how much more fun, you know, not everyone's an extrovert, of course, but it's, it's been shown how important that is to mental and physical health and, you know, the sense of security that comes from knowing your neighbors and, you know, feeling more, more settled and, and connected yeah. to a community. Well, we're not talking about a kind of hyper density where you can't escape to your own space or your right. own garden or whatever. You know, like there's going to be plenty of opportunity uh, at that property and the other properties we've talked about um, to, you know, to tend your garden and to right. be in your room by yourself or whatever. Right. You know, it's like it's not like we're stuck. You know, uh, one of the complaints that always comes up is packing people in you know like, right like they're all breathing sucks. on each yeah, other breathing <laughs> on each other sardines in a can you know and uh, manhattan totally we don't want manhattan yeah. here well i don't think we do right yeah, yeah that's right we don't <laughs> yeah. i'm with you yeah i'm with you too um no i think we want you know uh copenhagen style density or or amsterdam well, style and different density. kinds of you know different yeah. vari- varieties of it and um um but w- one of the things i i'd like to to point out that's so cool about this project is the location so we are like uh three blocks from broadway and um i don't know how many blocks from pearl street but we're by 10 yeah 10 so we're this is this is like i'm trying to design my life around not having to own a car and not having to take up space with a car and i want to i want lots more people to have opportunities to live without cars and and to to be on north street here with a shared car with we, bikes and, and this is our plan for the city to make these you know 50 every neighborhood a 15 minute neighborhood that you yep. can walk to um yeah, you know great, the key commercial areas and right here around the bowl the alpine balsam project and the uh community plaza shopping area here it's it's got it's a very popular neighborhood because we've got trails we've got the whole western edge of boulder it's a great trail system we got north boulder park we have a, a great commercial area kc elementary school a short walk to downtown i mean it's really a, a, a great example and so we're just trying to get it on another trajectory from being completely luxury 
neighborhood. Well, and, 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 and actually still in the process of moving in that direction, right? Like there's still oh. houses being bought. Oh, sprayed, everything is going yeah. that way. And yeah, it's a good it's a good time to just put a plug in for our, our third episode uh, on North Street where we talked about the the mansion that's going in over here and the on affordable, Sixth Street. the affordable apartments that got taken down and are being turned into yeah one point five million dollar condos, condos and and the balsam two point five to three point three and, million dollar and it, it just feels like such a rigged system when those things are we've set up a market to incentivize all of that. And here you are trying to uh, push against the tide and build beautiful housing. for. But create the same thing, which is that the market would just naturally do this other thing. If it was allowed to. Yeah. If we, we, you know, I think you would still probably have to do something to de-incentivize luxury-only development. Because, and, you know... Again, we can build luxury into the projects, um, so it's because it can be helpful. But luxury only, it's it, it, it's it's, a, it's creating a, it's, more of a diversity desert. It's madness. More of a it's madness in so many ways. And those people, I mean, those people. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know those. People. You know those people <laughs> are like, you know, made a lot of money or have a lot of money. I mean. D- Definitely, it takes all kinds, yeah. but but just those kind of those people, I think, would say, "Oh, that's kind of boring too." I mean, just all lo- you know, wealthy people. That's yeah, yeah, could be more fun. All right. Well, uh, is that a wrap? I mean, do we have more to say about this uh, awesome well, pr- pilot project? Well, again, I think it's a, it's a very exciting one. Whether I mean, as a as a co-op, we're ex- so excited to build Boulder's first new build and new. Um, at for and for sale co-op, um, it's a it's you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars or so per share. It's eighteen hundred dollars a month. You know that includes the mortgage, the cars, the utilities. Um, you know it's just a great way for younger people or downsizing people. We're just very excited to see how who um, is interested in that. And uh, I think it's a great way for people to get into for sale housing in Boulder, which is, you know, now it's totally collapsed. There's no for sale housing that middle income people, working people can yeah. access. Yeah. We were talking earlier about um, just sort of like thinking about the weight of the climate crisis mm. and how we, we all kind of feel some despair of this, this race we have to the cliff mm. where it seems like nobody's really want to... St- wants to step out and put their foot on the gravel to, to slow this, this, this car crash. Um, and, uh, I like to me, I get a lot of hope from the, the possibility of us coming together, building great neighborhoods, beautiful neighborhoods that are socially connected and, uh, green for the, the climate and produce food diverse. That, that's that's like that's the thing that gives me hope and optimism in all of this is that we can like yeah it's too bad that we've burned so much fossil fuel building suburbia but it also taught us that humans don't thrive in that environment even if there wasn't a climate crisis it's just like it's just like a horrible structure to live in right so we're going to build beautiful neighborhoods some people like it <laughs> some I'm... people like it but i think i think at the end of the day um a lot of people are suffering from feeling isolated and that's de- right and depressed and it, and and it dis- doesn't end well you know financially it's not good the infrastructure you know expensive infrastructure is spread out over sure. fewer people there's a lot of financial problems for cities with that low density i was, I was watching the uh someone was summarizing strong towns and about the, the ponzi growth scheme that's baked into how suburban sprawl has been developed over decades and how that's all it's, it's starting to collapse. It's probably going to get a lot worse uh, soon. Well, the, I think the point is that we can make money. People can make money yeah. doing this transformation. We can make something better. There's a risk, of course, of not people. doing it well. But yeah. we, I think we can work together and, and do it well. And just to build on what you said, action is a great antidote to despair. 
and oppression. And we who can do something want to show young people that we can work together and take action and let's 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 get together and and work on it. And I was really inspired by some uh, climate activists talking about the millennial despair of millennial right. I mean, the despair of of millennial writers looking at the current situation. And I, uh, it was just super well done. Yeah, so what was the, what was the episode? And well, it's the, the, from the political scene. And um, uh, Daniel Shirell, one of the writers, just shared that while it's depressing to look at the, the huge obstacle we have to go, to, you know, to keep from going over 1.5 degrees C, um, and all the millions of people that die with each tenth of a degree between 1.5 and 3, which is the current arc, or it could be higher, in my opinion. But the, the point is, he's dedicating his life. It's a huge task, each tenth of a degree, which means millions of people. But what better thing could you do with your life than to work together with people yeah. who you care about, who you're all sharing this vision of a world where everyone matters yeah and how beautiful that is so well, that's what one of the things that he said that really stood out to me in, in terms of thinking about this hope and despair and, and whether or not we can keep our shit together to do positive make positive changes just that fact that when you step into that that fight you meet the other people that are also in the fight. That's right. And, and community, so more what, community. What better way to spend your life than to spend your life with those people who are also in on it? So, and that, Greta that was, Greta Thunberg also talks about that in her speech to the UN. Anyway, just about how many people don't really know. They don't really get it. They didn't listen to Daniel Shrell. They didn't get infused with the 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 beauty of being connected with other people. And I I would just like to bring up my. Dutch friend that I taught this older Dutch lady who grew up in Amsterdam in 1944. And she talked about, because the Nazis tried to starve them, but there had been so much resistance in Holland to the Nazi occupation. And she said there was no more beautiful time in her life, she was a teenager then, with how creative they were, how they worked together to help each other and feed each other and occupy their time and learn, etc. Uh, and I was really, really, it's always struck with me that t times can be difficult and no one, you know, w w wants to wish difficult times on anyone. But there are going to be difficult times. We, we have difficult and, times ahead of and, us. And, and, and we can rise and we can benefit from working together to meet that yep. challenge. Yep. Amen.